Hey, what up, Lounge? I'm gonna go through a bunch of stuff that helps me with putting, see if it helps anybody else out. Kind of go through all the things in my checklist when I'm walking up to a pressure putt, something that matters, something that I gotta make to win, something for a hundred bucks, whatever, doesn't really matter, but these are all the things that I kind of go through in my head. So like the first one that I really focus on is breathing. So when I'm walking from the tee up to the green, I'm focusing on my breath. I'm breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth the whole time. and it's. It's not necessary, but I've noticed that the better I get at disc golf, the more it becomes a game of breathing than a game of throwing frisbees. And if I can be as calm as I can, as low of a heart rate as I can, if I could be focused on my breath, then it's a lot easier to execute the shots that I want to execute. So when I walk up, I'm I'm not really talking. I mean, I'll talk to people, I'll hang out, I'll have a good time, obviously, because that's what you do when you're playing disc golf. But you, uh, You'll never see me walk up to a putt without taking a few deep breaths before taking it. And then you'll never see me walk up to a putt and immediately just go and rip it at the basket. It's just not gonna happen. I'm gonna get up there, big deep breath in, deep breath out, and I'm gonna start lining up my putt, I'm gonna see what I like. And the big thing for me with putting is when you release your putt, it has to do with your breathing as well. So for me, I like to take a bunch of deep breaths and I like to exhale, so I'll be going in, I'll in, out, in, out, in, out. And what I did there is I punted at like the bottom of my breath. So I'm going in, I'm going out, I'm going in, I'm going out. And as I exhale and empty out my lungs and get down to nothing, then I feel like I am at my most focused state. Um, I heard, it was some stupid quote, I think Zombieland, where they're talking about shooting guns and that's how people shoot guns and that's where I got it from when I was like 12 years old. I thought, oh, if I can focus on this breath while I'm putting, I'm going to be more accurate with my shots, just like somebody would shooting a target with a sniper rifle. So. so like once I'm focused, once I'm in there and I've got that focus lined up, um, there's a few like visual cues I have, things that I'm looking for to see and aim at that I wanna make sure that I'm lining up. So like probably the biggest one for me is when I choose the chain I wanna aim at, I'm making it so that I can kind of see it off the top of the putter. So I'll see if I can line this up for you on the camera so you can see. So I'm gonna aim at that orange band on the basket and I'm gonna line my putter up so I can see just the top of that orange band right there. So this is my release point. My release point is gonna be above the basket bottom and right at that red thing right there. And it's gonna be a little flatter or even hyzer for me. I like to putt with a baby hyzer rather than a baby anhyzer. Um, so that line up, you line it up beforehand. And then what you wanna do is as you follow through, you wanna hit that same release point you just lined up. I see a lot of putters, they will line up a putt in a certain spot and then they'll release way in a different spot. They're releasing somewhere else. They're not even close to where they thought they were releasing. Um, and all that has to do with is the follow through. So as you follow through, you should hold your hand up to wherever you want it to be. And like, you'll see a million different versions of this. Like the very obvious stock one that I see all the time is the Calvin Heimberg, where he flips his hip palm up and he's got his hand facing the sky. So as he releases, he's got his palm straight up at the sky like that. And that's great if you're gonna use the bottom of your fingers to like lift the putter, just like Ricky does, just like Calvin does, you're gonna use those bottom fingers to push the putter up a lot. It's gonna help you get that nice spin because you're taking your hand from here and you're rotating your hand, which is causing the disc to spin more as it comes out. For me, I like to release nice and flat. Vertical, 90 degree angle with the ground, you know, just vertical and it's because it's easier for me to line this up than it is this. This feels like I'm flexing my arm and I'm turning into an uncomfortable position where this, it's like shaking a hand. Everybody knows how to do this. You know how to put your hand out right in front of you. So like for me, I am reaching back and when I follow through, I'm trying to hold that hand up and I like to hold it up until I see the putter hit the bottom of the basket or even longer. So when I line it up, I go here, here, and even though I missed the putt, now if I'm holding my putter up, holding my hand up, I can see my hand is angled a little bit down. I didn't want to angle it down. And it's a little higher than my release point. My release point was aimed to be like here. 
I was going for this spot and I released here. And that's why I was high and nose down on that putt. So I can make the adjustment now. I can see, oh, I followed through right here. Next time I need to follow through right here. So I can get that angle from here down to there. And that was the big difference. That's the reason I missed the putt. And so now I know not to do that on my next putt. I know what my problem was and I have a solution for it already rather than having to guess to see what the next solution is. So now I'm gonna to try to take another putt and I'm gonna I'm gonna make the adjustment. I'm gonna drop my hand down from here and I'm gonna make sure my follow through is straight at the basket. And that one was a little bit to the right, but I let go of it early, so it was okay. Much better. So like those are the things I look for right away. Like the initial, these have to happen every time. I have to get that follow through, I have to focus on my breath. The next one, it helps line up that follow through with where you're trying to go. So I learned this one from Isaac, Isaac McDonald, if you guys know him. He's a crusher, he throws like 8,000 feet. Um, he makes me feel like I throw about 100 feet every time I play with him. Um, and then he putts from like 200 feet out every time, so it's ridiculous. He's really inspiring to watch play. Um, so like, I learned this one from him, he said it to me a long time ago, and I thought, wow, I'm already kind of doing this, but I never put it into words. I never really had that thing that made it clear that that's what I was trying to do. And he said, he told me once, I, I missed a putt low, and I followed through low. And he said, putt through your eyeballs. You gotta putt at your eyeballs. And I went, what the hell are you talking about, man? And he said, when you follow through, you should have a straight line pass from your eyeballs through your hand into the basket where you're aiming. And I went, huh, that happens whenever I make a perfect putt. I'm lined up perfectly. My hand is in line with the basket and my eyeballs are right in line with it, just perfectly on line. And that's what he was talking about. And it, Next putt I took was like a 40 footer and I drained it dead center because I just all I aimed for was my release point. Instead of thinking about the reach back, instead of thinking about how much spin I need to get or how much loft I need to get, I just putted like a normal person, didn't think anything of it, and I focused on that release point. I focused on where am I aiming, how's my hand look, and how can I get my eyeballs lined up with my hand, lined up with the basket. It's just like if you ever played like a, a pool game on your phone or like Disc Golf Valley, where you grab the disc or the pull wall, you pull it back down, and whatever angle you make, that's kind of gonna make it. So if I'm, if I'm here, let me find a stick. There's one. So if I'm here and I pull it down, you, know, that means I'm gonna go that way. Vice versa, if I pull it down this way, it's gonna be that way and it's gonna go off to the left. So like, the big one I see do this um, in a bad way, but it works for him and that's why he does it. Um, is Ezra. Ezra likes to putt with his uh, pullback down and towards his left hip. And the reason he does that is because he doesn't want to hit his body with the putter. So like I'm limited to my distance when I pull my putter back to here. I pull it into my chest. I can't reach back further than where my arm is. So my arm kind of is limited to being like, let me give you a good angle. So if you look at the angle of my elbow right here, when I reach back, there's not, I can't get to here. The only way I can get to here is by you doing some lag. So when I pull through and I push with my arm, I have to push forward with my elbow first. Then I have a chance for my arm to contract and then spin more. And that's not comfortable for a lot of people. You'll see Eagle do this a lot. He putts with his elbow up a little bit. And when he putts, his arm, kinda, his arm and shoulder push forward and then his hand falls behind and allows him to snap the putter a lot more because he's past 90. He's not here trying to putt. He's here trying to putt. He's got more angle to work with. Rather than getting 90 full degrees of rotation, he's getting like 120. You'll see this on like Emerson Keith too. He's a hinge putter. He purposefully putts like this. He uses that elbow hinge and he'll take it and he'll go all the way back as far as he can to get an angle like this and then snap it out so he gets a lot of spin. Rather than adjusting your form to get some sort of hinge putt, Ezra decided I'm just gonna putt over here because now I can bend my arm more if I reach back down here and I've got more range of motion to, as I pull through and get that lag, watch the difference. So if I go here and I try to lag it, it gets tight in here and this angle gets to about there. If I'm down here and I lag it, 
see how I can push my elbow a lot more forward and it's really tight. Like, I'm not thinking about actively pushing my elbow. I'm more thinking about letting my wrist be limp as long as I can. So like if I'm here and I go here and I start to push forward my putt, if my wrist is stiff, the putter stays where it is. It just goes back and forth like this. But if my, my putter is nice and relaxed, my wrist is nice and relaxed, when I go here, my putter collapses back into my hand like this. And that's gonna allow me to snap the putter a lot more out of my hand. And there's like a, there's a high and a low um, range of what you wanna do. Like, I know when I miss my putt short, it's most of the time because I have too stiff of a wrist and I go pull through and I'm here and rather than letting it curl a little bit, I'm stiff and I don't get the snap out of the putter I want. But the vice versa can happen. I've seen a lot of people where they go and they curl it up all the way and they're snapping them and they're airballing to like 50 feet past the basket. Because when you have that much spin on the disc, it's gonna stay in the air so much longer. And like the spin is a great thing to have and you're gonna want it and you're definitely gonna need it if you have longer putts, if you've got windy putts, if you've got uphill putts, you're gonna need that amount of spin to keep your putter in the air. But it's very not useful from 10 feet away if you have a bad release point. If you're missing right and you have a spin putt, you're gonna be gone every time. You're gonna be way deep. One of the other big things that I focus on is the pace of my putt, so how fast I'm doing my motion. How quickly am I actually swinging my arm through and forward? Um, and I see a lot of people uh, do what I would say, it's common in run-ups and in putts, it's, it's this acceleration problem where if you had a chart that you were looking at, if you were looking at a chart of speed and like, you know, you got your Y and your X-axis here, all that stuff, and like, if I were to talk about how fast my arm is moving when I putt, a lot of people do this. They go up on a 45 degree angle. They, they, they slowly increase the speed the whole time. Uh, that's like the middle ground. If you could be there, you're gonna be better off most of the time if you're in that middle ground. But the majority of people seem to be on the other end. They go up first and then level off. So you, I see a lot of people, they pull back really quickly. They'll be set up and they'll go, uh, uh, and they'll do a lot of backwards motion. And it's really counterintuitive because the way I think about it is, if I wanna go that way, why am I putting all my energy to go this way? Why would I take all of that energy and pull it back when all I'm trying to do is go forward? I think the biggest culprit of this, what I see on the Pro Tour is uh, Casey White. He has a really fast putting motion, but he's one of the better putters outside of circle two. He hits his 60 to 90 footers all the time, and it's because he's really explosive with his putt. He's got this hard pullback, hard forward motion, and he's consistent at it. He's good at doing it a lot, and that happens from time. He does it long enough that it allows him to use that explosivity to get that putter forward and get a lot of energy on it so he can be accurate at those long ranges. For him, when he's at, let's say, 75 feet, it might feel like one of us at like 50 feet because he's got an extra 25 feet of snap on his putter. So he can just putt like it's a 50 footer and he's gonna be hitting metal a lot more often. A lot more often. Um, this brings me to like one of my other like last points I wanna bring up is uh, step putting. So I see a lot of people step putting and I, I'm all about it. If you can put the putter in the basket, good for you. That's how you get better scores. Put the putter in the basket. But I think it's more of a detriment in the long run to be relying on it too much. So what I'm saying here is that like if you are a someone that they get to that one foot out of the circle and they step putt, um, I get it. It's going to give you a lower score because you can take that step putt. I talked to another lounger about this once a while, a long time. I've talked to him about it once, Pat Haker. He does this. He step putts there. And it's because when he is this far away, it's comfortable. It's easy to putt. And when he gets to about 35 feet out, he can putt with the exact same motion as this 15 footer and use his leg to get all the motion there. He can use his body to make that weight happen. And more power to you, put the putter in the basket. But I remember once I was watching, I think this was like Portland Open or something in like 2019 maybe, 2020. Um, and Eagle McMahon had a, I think it was like a 112 foot putt. 
up a hill. It was a monster putt, a putt that none of us would take. We'd all throw a putter at the basket or flick a zone at the basket or whatever. We would not putt this putt. And he lines it up and he's setting up, he's getting ready to go. And we're all thinking big old jump putt, you know, something big so he can just lay up. And Eagle just calmly and casually just and it goes all the way there and it just fucking bottom of the basket, perfect putt. And I thought to myself, well if Eagle McMahon can putt stand still like a normal person from 112 feet, I can do it from like 70, maybe 60. You know what I mean? I can meet that kind of bound and I can make sure I have control at that distance. And that was a big thing I had was I would step putt and I would jump putt I'd do all the things, I would try them all, and I just felt like I had no control. I felt like I was adding too many variables to my putt. When I, I normally was focused on that, now I was focused on jumping and landing with my feet, and also trying to transfer the energy from the jump through my feet, up my body, into my hands somehow, which to me felt foreign. It felt like, why am I jumping up, or why am I jumping that way if I'm trying to put a putter on like a a forward up and down trajectory. It just didn't seem to transfer that well for me. So I started just putting standstill from everywhere and seeing how far I can go. And what happened was, once I got to about 75, 80 feet with uh, standstill putt, so basically outside circle two, once I got to the edge of circle two and I was still just standstill putting, I realized that I could jump putt at about 120 feet now. So all those short up shots that would kill me in my rounds, I'd have a 100 foot up shot and I try to throw it and it would just be like right into the ground and I just fluff it or I go as soft as I can and just throw it 100 feet past the basket. I didn't have to do those anymore. I could just take my putter and just jump putt and there's a chance I might even make it because I'm comfortable at like 80 so I don't know one out of 20 I might make that 120 footer one out of 30 you never know but the big difference was all my all those jump putts as long as I got a good release with my hand I was within 15 feet of the basket I had a tap in or so with that putt so it was nice to be able to just not have to use all that explosivity in my body and use it in my arms which is really what you're focused on when you're putting I don't know a lot of people that do a lot with their legs like the big ones Kevin Jones but it's from a straddle he uses that squatting motion to get a lot out of his putt which you better do. You're gonna need to do that if you're gonna be a straddle putter. You're gonna have to use your legs a lot. If you're a straddle putter and you putt like this, you're, you're gonna have a lot of trouble at that long distance. It's gonna be really confusing, really uncomfortable to get power. Let's see, I don't know much else I can go off of right now. I don't wanna get into too much on angles or wind or anything. Just because that's a whole other, there's a lot of motivating factors in there. Um, uh, I would say a, a few like long-term tips with putting is um, definitely learn how to putt with all the styles. I think you would, most people are more beneficial if they know how to putt in certain ways. Like I know a lot of guys that they're, the, they're your stereotypical push putters. They reach down low and they pop it up, they go here to here and they're push putting like that. And they've got this up and down motion going. And it's really, it's vertical. It's very vertical. And I like that kind of putt because what it does is it allows you to land in the basket or land in the ground really close to the basket every single time. You're not usually going down and getting any problems. And it's, it's because as you come to the basket, like if this is the basket and I'm going up and down, I'm up as I fall down the angle I'm going on is like here. So like, if I mess this up too far, I'm still only here. But with a spin putt, where it's more direct at the basket, I'm going straight through it. So if I miss to the right, it just keeps going. It continues on forever. Um, for me, I'm like a, I'd say I'm like 60, 70% spin with a little bit of push in there. And it's because of learning all the putting styles. I spent a few years I remember hearing Nico was doing it. He was trying all these different putts, he was trying different things, and I went, okay, I'm gonna be as good like as my normal putt at all the other putts. I wanna be able to straddle, straddle push, straddle spin, straddle, straddle push. I wanna be able to stand still, stagger, do the, the, the hyzer, I wanna get Anheuser's, I wanna get 
lofty ones. I want to get snappy spins. I want a hinge pot. I want to get it all. I want to figure out every single one. Because if you're better at what everybody does, you can kind of combine them and make your own little hybrid of all those, those little techniques and take all the best things from each one of those techniques and utilize it to your advantage. So like having those spin putt mentalities is gonna be really useful for certain situations. I can't tell you how many times I've been in an event playing with a guy and he's, a, he's your stereotypical push putter. He's got his nice up and down, high low straddle putt. And he walks up to a bushy lie where he's stuck in the bushes, got a low ceiling from like 30 feet out. And he's got to go to a knee. He's stuck down low, putting from a knee, and this is his putting stroke. It hit the ground with his putter and then flip it back up. And every single time, this is what happens. They can't get the putter to the basket. They have trouble getting any power when they can't use their legs and they can't loft their putter down nice and low. So like for me, I spent a whole year 100% spin putting. I would do every putt like this and I would snap them. And you see, it goes way past the basket when you miss. But what happened was after I spent a year or so doing it, I got really good at it. And then I started adding more push into it. I figured out I could putt a lot better from weird situations, from awkward stances. I was watching the, uh, I think this was either the Green Mountain Championship, so maybe it was the, it might have been Worlds even, when they had it at Green Mountain up at Fox Run, Smuggler's Notch, that area. Um, and there was this upshot that Nico threw from like a weird angle like this, like 200 feet with like a mid or something. And the commentators were going on about how much core strength he had to use to make that putt happen. He was holding himself up in a position that allowed him to continue to twist his body and do that. And I think that's super important with the spin putting as well, is having that core strength, especially when you don't have your legs involved. So when I'm down here and I've got this stupid putt, it's really easy to relax and then loft the putt up there. But if I can tighten up my core and snap the putter a lot more and get it up into those chains, it's gonna be a lot better off because even if I miss, oh no, I, I'm gonna have a comeback that I might not make. But in the long run, I'm gonna get more comfortable at doing these kind of snappy putts. And it, for a while, I was like, man, this isn't paying off. And then eventually I got to the point where I just started banging these putts. I would have these in the woods in tournaments, 35 footers from the woods where I have to go to a knee. And all of a sudden, I'm just banging them. I'm just sitting here, ripping them through. And like, see that? This is a great example. So to me, that's a good putt. I wouldn't change that putt. A lot of people have a putt like that goes through the bit chains, goes off the pole, bounces back out. And they think to themselves, oh, I just missed that putt. And I disagree. I don't think you missed the putt. I think you got spit out. And that's a huge difference thing right there. So like, when I have a putt that goes through the chains like that, out the other side, I usually have, unless I know there was a mistake there, like, I know this course has weird baskets and the baskets aren't that great and they go right through. So you gotta put softer here. But I would tell myself that I made that putt. That is a good putt. Don't change anything. Keep your stroke the same. Keep everything the same. Because if you do that again, chances are it's probably not gonna spit through. Because they don't usually spit through like that. You get that one out of seven or eight putts maybe on a crappy basket that spits through. You usually get it to stick somewhat. And so like don't change your mentality just because the basket spit you out, just because it didn't catch well. You, if you put the putter where you were aiming to put it, it was a good putt and you should continue to follow that path of that good putt is what you're aiming for. So uh, That's about all I think I have, but I hope you guys enjoy. I hope people can find some knowledge in here, make some use of this. Uh, let me know if it makes you a better putter if you change your mind on some thoughts, but yeah. Thanks guys, keep on lounging.